makes the simple decisions and does the ordinary extraordinarily well. Nick Dacos from the pocket. What a star this young man is. This is my first proper interview. Is it? Yeah. It's exciting to watch him play, and I don't know where the roof is on what he's going to yeah. produce. Oh, my goodness. Has he got an air of greatness or what? So first up, have you paid your brother's melee fines yet? Oh, the melee fines. <laughs> They're a bit of a talking topic at the moment. I, I haven't got around to paying them. I think we're going to divvy them up between the boys. We're just working it out at the moment. I think the leaders spoke about maybe we all step in and, and chip in, which is a good result for me. You would have been expecting attention. On reflection, how do you reckon you handled it? Yeah, well, I got tagged last year by Sydney both times we played them by Ryan Clark, so I was expecting him to come to me and the coaches had sort of hinted that they were expecting the same and it's just little positional changes that we can do and I've sort of got to fight through it from half back. But I think on the day we handled it really well and we sort of manipulated the tagger in a way that we get 1v nuns, whether I take Scott's man and then they both come with me and Scott's free or Geordie. And so we actually sort of encouraged the tag and like it. But mm. yeah, it worked on the day, which was awesome. So that's the, that's the football mechanics of it. How, how does yeah. it feel to you? Like when you know that you've got someone that's you know, trying to get under your grill, really? Yeah, I guess, like, for me, I just try and keep cool. Obviously, it can be pretty tough, especially when I see all my teammates are sticking up for me. It's a great feeling, but I also want to get involved. But we're encouraged to stay out of it. And I actually got hit. When I got hit, I followed through and hit my funny bones. My arm just went dead. And all my teammates were over there sticking up for me. I wanted to get involved, but I was trying to hide my arm. And try and look tough at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. All week, we're preparing for it, whether it's at training. Sometimes I have someone running with me just to get a feel for it. And mm. the coach has been awesome for me. They just encourage me to play my game. They mm. use me in different positions to free me up. and. And yeah, as you would have seen, my teammates and, and mm. Raider mate Art in particular sticks up for me a lot, which is great. So Josh was, um, yeah, always going to yeah. be around. What, what's it like to play with your brother? I know the AFL experience is amazing. Does it magnify it being able to share it with a family member? Oh, definitely. We've um, we've had a really close journey throughout the years, and I'd like to think we've been there for each other. He's taught me so much about footy, and then I think early days when he was struggling with form and in and out of the side. I think I was there for him a lot too. And we, we worked together, worked really hard to hopefully play together one day. And last year against St Kilda, it was just awesome to finally debut together. It was a real special moment. And yeah, we're smiling at each other a lot of the time and pretty surreal. And now we do it on a weekly basis, which is just so much fun for us. Oh, so after round one last year against St Kilda, you've played together for the first time. Was there a moment with mum and dad, did you sit around the family table, the dinner table at all? What, what was the recognition of that moment? Yeah, it's actually a good point. It probably came before the game, to be honest. Right. It's the dinner before. Mum usually cooks up a pasta for us and we're sitting around and it was just that moment of realisation that the next night I was living out my dream and also one of Josh's dreams too, which was to play alongside me. So I think that was the moment. It was so special to share it with my family and they were up in a box for the game and um, Dad would have had a grin from ear to ear. So it was just, yeah, it was so special for me and I was really proud. Well, I've spoken with your old man a few times and I reckon his first language is footy. It's not English. Like, no. <laughs> he, he loves it. Like, he yeah. lives and breathes it. How... How has that gone? Because I, I assume sometimes you, you want to back away from footy, but yeah. how's that go sort of, one, following in the footsteps of a champion of the club, who is your dad, yeah. and then having that relationship whilst you're going through your career? Yeah, you're definitely spot on. I think um, you would have got a good gauge for it, being in the footy environment for so long. There's definitely times where it can be a bit overwhelming and you do want to step away and you want to go see mates and not have to talk footy or go to dinner and not have to talk footy. And I think Dad finds that balance really well with me. He'll talk to me about footy and after games, I think he's pretty quick to catch on the mood that I'm in. And whether he's giving me hints or just getting around me and talking about the next day, he um, he's offered me so much wisdom over the years and experiences and shared that with me, which I'm forever grateful for. And then just as a dad, he's been so loving and caring, which I think's the main thing, footy aside, but just encourages me to have a fun time. Like he, he always mm. tells Josh and I, just smile out there and get the win, which is the main thing. So how did he balance that up as a you know, as a dad myself with, you know, teenage sons, how did he balance up the, f the fun and enjoyment of the sport with the necessity for hard work? Or was that just innate for you guys? I think that was innate, but um, it sort of came off a needs basis, I think. Like, if in juniors, Dad would never coach us at all. We'd go to the park with Dad, we'd have a kick, we'd have a fun time, we'd smile. It was never about doing drills or running around cones or structured things. And then as time went on, if we had 
a poor game by our own admission, Dad would sort of say, oh, what did you think we do wrong? And we'd go to him for that sort of advice. But he was never down our throat, which I think was the main thing. We'd, we'd seek that advice and he was always there for us, which meant so much. And what about your mum? She obviously loves her footy as well, especially watching you guys go about it. But what, what has been her influence along the journey? Mum's been just your typical loving mum. She's always driven us to trainings, made us food, just been done everything that um, a great mum would do. Her and her sister, who unfortunately passed away last year, they'd always come to our games and support us, which meant so much to us. And yeah, she just always has a smile on her face. So she mm. doesn't really talk footy post game or anything. She moves on pretty quickly. Dad does the footy talk, but mum just is always there for us when we need a big hug and a cuddle, I think. So, so tell us about that too, because I, I don't think we humanise AFL players enough. So you just had a remarkable 18 months, but in that time, you've lost an auntie yeah. and a grandfather, and, and that's the that's the two that, that I know of now. Yeah. Like so, riding those highs and lows as a family, is it does it just bring you close together, and as a club, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. So going into my first year, Christmas Day, we lost my auntie, which was um, a battle with cancer, which was terrible for us. It was, it was a really tough time and um, yeah, Christmas Day was spent at hospital and um, we got through that and as you said, like we just come back to family and I think even the club here has created a great culture where we wrap our arms around each other and are always there for each other and we encourage each other to be vulnerable and open up and then um, unfortunately lost my, my dad or my grandpa on the eve of round one. We had their funeral, his funeral, sorry, so pretty tough but as you said, I think it sort of does make you realise mm. that footy's just a small part of your life and there's so much else that goes on. But yeah, definitely set my priorities with you want to do well in footy, but just make sure family's OK first, I think. Yeah, both you and Josh have presented amazingly well in those spaces. So Thank you. Well done to you. Appreciate that. You, you're playing some good footy. Um, <laughs> you've uh, you know, started with, with 35 um, to open the season. Yeah, 32 and a couple of goals against Brisbane, copying a tag even in a loss. 33 against the Tigers in 38, 42, 40, like it rolls on. You're doing a pretty good job at, you know, debunking the second year blues. <laughs> How have you done it? Um, I think for me it just comes back to working really hard. Um, I was really happy but not content with my first year in a way. The ultimate for me was being there on the last day of the year and winning it as a team and unfortunately we obviously fell short by a point. So I guess I had a couple of weeks off after that and then pretty quickly we got back to training again, Josh and I. Um, we trained with our teammate Isaac Quainer at a local gym and we just got to work and he's also having a great year. Love seeing him run off the half back line alongside us and, and really thrive. But yeah, I really think the work instills the worth. So I just continue to work really hard. I, I was going to ask you about Q. Is he... Um, <laughs> so word is that he's your, he's your gym bro? Yeah, is he's my right? gym bro. So, I don't know who's leaked that to you, but that is correct. <laughs> no, no, I've got, got my sources. I know some people in here. Um, so do you, like, so I reckon he would be stronger than you. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, stronger body at this stage and yeah. had more time in the gym. Do you find that you're looking for people in different facets of the game that are maybe just above you, so yeah, they stretch you? Is that something that you do? Absolutely. I went away to Cairns for a few days with my girlfriend and that was a time where I did reset my focuses for the year following and mm. exactly as you said, one of my focuses was to get stronger. So I d identified Isaac as someone that I can work with and he's also one of my close friends, which helps. Um, we have a lot of laughs and a good time lifting weights and working hard together and really want the best for each other. But yeah, going into the pre-season, I was definitely behind him and I think now we've sort of um, evened out our weightlifting competition. So hopefully I can get him soon. So give us a, like, where's your 1RM at the moment? On bench press, bench. it'd be around. 125, nearly 130. And, and body weight? 80. So you're, you're over one and a half times body weight, which is yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna do better. You're gonna Hopefully, better. yeah. That's, um, uh, Isaac's lifting the bar, so I'll try and follow that's him. That's a good ratio, mate. <laughs> so um, who's the running guy that you, the, or the, the gut runner that you're chasing? Yeah, well, Josh has been really good for me. He's um, improved his running out of sight, so I've done a lot of running with him in the off season. And then just the likes of Pat Lipinski, Jack Chris, um, Isaac, again, there's so many good runners we have. I'm really fortunate. And just seeing the work they put in and even pre-season, the way they come back in shapes, mm. something that I'm adjusting to. This was my first pre-season coming back as a player mm. and um, seeing the way that all the boys came back, I think was really motivating for me too. You, you, you spoke about cans and going goal setting. Do you write them down? Do you, like, obviously you share them to bring accountability, but I get the sense that the drive comes from within. Yeah, uh, constantly. But do, so, did you did you write your goals down? Yeah, I write them down in a little journal. Um, 
which was good for me. I think, as you mm. said, just holding them, holding yourself to account. Um, mm. And yeah, daily I check it and try and check in with how I'm tracking. And yeah, I think once I write it down, it really holds me to account. That's why I like doing that. So stretch goals in there, like big picture ones? Or just for, um, just for the, the two, 2023? Yeah, just for 2023. It was more around pre-seasons, so getting stronger, getting fitter again, just getting more skillful pretty much every aspect of the game. I just thought, how can I improve a little bit and come back a better player again? And, yeah, I try not to think too much big mm. picture and, and long term. I try and, um, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but Fly preaches it to, to stay present and mm. he's done a great job in that for me. Just um, we have a philosophy at the club getting better every day, so I just try and do that as much as I can, and um, I think doing that long term will take care of itself. I love that answer, but I'm not going to let you get away with it. <laughs> Is there anything there about BNF? No, Where no. Where you there, want to finish? No, no? there definitely isn't, um, and I honestly mean that. I think. No. Um, the ultimate goal for me is uh, team success, and that's why I think I do get very uncomfortable at times with um, sometimes individual attention that I do get. And I think the start of the year has been a little bit overwhelming for me because I'm not used to that and I don't want all that mm. attention. And I sort of try and deflect it to the team because I genuinely feel like I'm not the player I am without them and everything they do for me. And I get a really good role in our team to create offensively. And there's a lot of players that do a lot of stuff behind the scenes mm. to allow me to get that role. So. Yeah, I do get very uncomfortable with the spotlight a little bit. And as I said, yeah, my goal this year has been to win a premiership. How have you, how have you spat out so selfless then with the skills that you have and with the ability that you possess? Where, where's that come through? I think um, Dad's always instilled humility in us. So I mm. go out there and I might feel like skills is one of my strengths, but I feel like we're all even out there as teammates mm. and um, everyone's got their different strengths. So I try and bring mine to the floor, but I also don't think that mine should stand out or be recognised mm. um, more than my other teammates' strengths, like Jeremy Howe mm. can take some of the most freakish mm. marks I've seen and Scott Penderbury's decision-making under pressure and there's just so many players, Bobby Hill now with his speed and skills, mm. that I don't think mine should be highlighted among, uh, ahead of theirs. You mentioned Fly. What's he brought as a coach that's allowed you to maximise your talent? I think he's very good at recognising strengths, as I said before. He puts players in positions to thrive and we've all done that. We've all got our different strengths and skill sets and for me, early days, it was my skills. So I was put across half-back where I had the licence to create, get a bit more offensive, make sure I was still accountable to an opponent, but... What are you pointing at me? It's a coach's thing, isn't it? <laughs> and, Does um, Fly ever come in and say, maybe you went a little bit too hard there, forward yeah, that time? Yeah, there has <laughs> been times. It has been times and Pendles occasionally tells me to pull the brakes up. Sometimes I'm in the forward pocket and I'm a half back, but... I've noticed that. Yeah, I sneak <laughs> down, but I think now I'm generating into being more of a midfielder. Mm. A lot of my focus is around my defensive work and my tackling and my efforts in that regard. And actually today, Fly pulled me in and highlighted one of my acts on the weekend, which was just a smother and following it up and spoiling it out of bounds. And he said how much that meant to him. And he said that if you keep performing, individual uh, accolades will come, but with mm. acts like this, team success will come. And I think that really stood out to me and inspired me to keep doing it. So I think he's got a good recognition mm. of what makes players tick, as all good coaches do. So I'm very grateful and lucky to have him as my coach. Well, that's back to back. The effort late in the Adelaide game would have been highlighted as well internally, yeah. would it not? Yeah, yeah, no, it was. So he highlighted that for me last week, yeah, which well. then I think, again, inspired me to do it again this week. So hopefully that keeps growing. Went 35 metres, but only as far as due date. Murray oh, smothered. Good. Nick Dacos came again. So I, I see you run around the field and I, you know, I've great admiration for Pendles. Played with him, coached him, and now I'm observing him as, you know, from a media view. I know how amazing he is. Yeah. And I see you two together and it's like, there's a sixth sense. Do yeah. you sense, do you feel that? Is it is yeah. it there? Yeah, at times I definitely do. Even if I'll be um, in trouble ball in hand, I'll just flick him the ball because I know he'll take care yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... And probably give it back to you in the best, yeah. better position, yeah. <laughs> but I, um, I'm actually in line with him um, in defence, so he'll be always in front of me, so then when we get the ball back in offence, we know that where each other are, and I think he's he's been an amazing role model for mm. me, not only on field, but off field, setting such high standards and seeing him come in and mm. at the age he is now, and I think it's his 19th, 20th year, but he trains just as hard from all reports as his first few years. I think it's really inspiring for me, and as you would know, he's just so humble, and I think the thing that I love most about him is, um, the things he tells all of us to do, he would do himself. He doesn't tell us to do anything that he wouldn't do. So I think that's a great aspect of his leadership. And Darcy Moore? Oh, yeah. So you had Pendles last year and now you've got Darcy this year. Oh, from the outside, once again, like he just looks 
like his duck to water, just so impressive with the way he goes about it. What does he, what does he bring to the team with, with his attitude and view on the game? Darcy's been amazing stepping into obviously big shoes to fill and mm. um, I think the way it's been a seamless transition and I think it really helps that Scott's still there and guides him and I'm fortunate to play in the same line group in the back line as Darcy and just the leadership he gives us on game day, he's so calm, um, his pre-game speech is always enough to get us hyped up but it's always still calm no matter the mm. occasion. And, um, well, you and he end up coming out the front at the moment, sort of smiling. Yeah, I love coming out the front of the race, it's always been a little superstition, I always come out early, I love... Um, well, seeing I, the crowd and hearing Gavin, the roar. Gavin Brown used to it was, it was my <coughs> first skipper, and I used to had to touch the grass straight after he, straight after he did. I had to be the second yeah. guy. It looks like you're doing something it's similar. It's pretty similar at the moment. I love um, I love taking it all in and hearing the roar as we first come out. So it's pretty special. Mm.